ora ete iwi and welcome to UFC on Sky. Ko Ravinda Hunia Toku Ingoa. Joining me, UFC lightweight and co host Dan Hooker. Kia ora. Kia ora. <laughs> Happy to be here as usual. Very good, very good. Now, look, we have a jam packed show today ahead mm. of. UFC 301, so let's get straight into it. Joining us now from Brazil is the flyweight champion Alessandro Pantoja. Kia ora and welcome to the show. I'm super happy to talk with you guys. Uh, you have a beautiful country. Uh, I want to enjoy it one time, you know. Maybe some vacations after that fight is going to be the best time. Oh, you are more than welcome to come and visit this beautiful country at any time. Um, but speaking of beautiful countries, you are in your country of Brazil. So talk to us about preparing for a title defense in your home of Brazil. So different, you know, uh, all the pressure. Brazil is super, you know, emotion people and uh, don't like the second place, you know. And I can understand that because we have like a, so, so much trouble in my, my country, you know. Uh, about corruption and a lot of things about that. So in, in some places, it's so poor. In some places, very rich. And uh, I, I think people want to be the first one, you know. He, he want to be uh, someone re represent, you know. And I want to represent all the people, you know. I, I want to be the first. I want to be a champion. And I want to make everyone happy, you know, especially May 4, you know. I have a big challenges coming for me. And uh, I, I'm super prepared for him, you know. I know Sivir Sagan is a uh, very tough hey, opponent. He showed that, you know. And uh, the point, he, he, he gave him, give me uh, attention because he's very calm in the octagon, you know. He feel like a very comfortable, you know. And that's making me feel like, uh, no, this guy is a true, you know. I can, I can, I can play with him, you know. And uh, especially because I train in America top team, I have very big challenges and uh, make me, me feel like uh, I need to go 100%, you know. And especially in, in Brazil, I, I think I have more pressure, you know. Do you mean to perform, to do your best in front of your own people? Yeah, you know, but but doesn't matter how I win, I want to win, you know. It doesn't matter if you go to the split decision. I don't care, you know. I want to be a champion. I want to steal the champion. But it's very important that I show all the world who, who's the champion, you know. And I, I'm working very hard for that moment, you know. But why I try to talk to you is uh, how, how uh, I make, like, a Steve Sagan important, you know. I give him, him very, very... I, I feel he like a, I fight with a giant guy, you know. And uh, I'm prepared for the best Steve Ersag, you know. I'm ready for the prime Ersag. Hey, mate, so Steve Ersag, he's undefeated since 2017. Um, were you surprised that the UFC matched this fight? I think first thing making him fight for the title is uh, very lucky, you know, because I'm already beat uh, the, the guys in the front line, Rival, Ersag, uh, Rival Moreno, a uh, couple names. Alex Perez make a beautiful win with Matheus Nicolau uh, last, last Saturday. Erseg, like I say, Erseg is lucky, you know, because we don't have a name to give to me to fight. And he make a beautiful uh, statement with Matt Chanel, you know. And uh, I talk you about that 100 times in UFC. Especially in my division, you can take the top 10 and fight with the number one and make a very good fight, you know, because this division is so close. The guy's so good, uh, have so so good skills, you know. And I say that because like a couple of years ago, people want to like uh, finish my division, you know. And I, I think like me and every every flyweight in the world thinking about no, this guy is wrong, you know. We, we're so competitive, you know. We, we in my division we need to be good in all I expect, you know. You need a good card, of course. You need a good strike. You need a good jujitsu. You need a good grappling because everybody know all the skills, you know. Why do you have like a different make you champ? You know, I think I'm uh, I have very good head. You know, uh, I think that the like the troubles about my life make me so strong for for that moment. You know, and uh, I think Erseg has some points. He's very comfortable when he step in the octagon, and that, that that's why he make he he fight with me right now. You know how how he fight with a three big challenge in UFC make the matchmakers UFC thinking about it. He's a good name for fight Pantoja. And I, I think right now in that moment, he's a big challenge for me, you know, because we don't see it here a lot. You know, he don't make it like a, a lot of fights in UFC. 
I fight with Emmanuel Capi, I fight with Reval twice, I fight with Moreno three times, you know, with Alex Paris. And I fight, I make a lot of wars in the UFC, you know. And I take this guy super fresh coming right now, super excited, you know, with the whole, whole country with him. That, that's a big challenge. Steve has mentioned in interviews that your biggest strength to him is your mindset, that will to not be broken during a fight. Where does that come from for you? He's, he's smart. When he say, uh, say that, I, I hear about, I, 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 I think about this guy is smart because he, th that's what I think too, you know. And uh, you can see he's very technical because he say that, you know. But I, I think I, I'm still involved, you know. After my two uh, fights for the title, you know, I fight one time with Moreno. In that fight, uh, I'm super nervous about the first uh, time I fight for the belt, and I, I fight with some uh, someone I, I beat twice. And uh, in my head, I, I I just go there and finish Moreno, but Moreno's looking incredible that night, you know. And then when I fight with Rival, I can enjoy more the fight, you know. I can relax. Uh, it make five zero, you know. I, I won all the rounds, and right now with their sagging. I think I think it's time to show you all my skills, uh, and uh, especially because I'm Brazil, uh, I want that connection with Brazil. You know, I never fight in Brazil for UFC. I need that connection. I I need to be a, a champion of the people. You know. So how eager were you to fight in um, Brazil? You must have been so eager to get on this card that you went all the way down to number ten. You know, how hungry were you to get on this card? After my fight with Reval, people talking about uh, UFC Hill is going to happen. And I say, no, now I'm a champion. Uh, I want to fight in Brazil. You know? I fight for UFC for seven years. I go to South Korea. I go to Chile, Canada, Glasgow, Abu Dhabi. So many places. I never fight in Brazil. I say, no, if you have a, a card in Brazil, I, I want to step in. You know, And that's why Steve Sagan come, come to that fight. You know? Maybe if uh, I don't want too much fight in Brazil, Maybe these fights never happen, you know. But I, I want to fight here. I want to fight at the front uh, of all, all my friends. And uh, my first coach is going to be in my corner. This is going to be so special for me, you know, have this guy with me because he, he created me. He, he, he make me uh, a cannibal, like I like to say. Because he, he, I go to so many gyms, train with so many people. doesn't matter the size. That, that's making me true warrior, you know, and I, I say to FC, I want to be in the card, and Steve Ersegui is a very good name for that moment right now, and, uh, you know, I want to be complete, you know, and that, of course, after that fight, I want some vacation, because this is going to be my third fight for a title in, like, uh, last one year, you know, and when you train for a title for five rounds, it's too much energy, you know, and uh, I, I think I deserve some, some, some time, you know. Yeah, you're right. You will deserve a break well and truly, but it also gives the top tier of the division time to get fit and ready again because those top five guys aren't quite ready and the flyweight division is, is kind of in a funny place at the moment. I love it. I love it about that, you know, because right now, uh, different no name, no more uh, revenge, you know. Uh, super fresh guy, very talented, uh, tall, strong, young. That, that's what, why I want right now, you know, that, that's a challenge, that's a, uh, a big motivation for me, training a lot, I'm training so hard for that guy, you know, and that's why I say I'm expect the best or second ever, you know. Well, thank you so much for your time, all the very best for this weekend and we'll be watching from here in New Zealand. I hope you visit you guys, I, I'm super excited to go there. Also joining us from Brazil is the flyweight title contender, Australian flyweight Steve Ursig. Kia ora, Steve. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. Look, last time we spoke to you, you said that you wanted to touch down in Brazil a little earlier to find your bearings over there. How has the trip gone so far? No, it's been very good. Uh, definitely worth coming over early. It took me about a week, week and a bit to get used to the, the time difference and just yeah feel like I'm firing on all cylinders. So... Um, it's been great here. People have been great. Uh, yes, awesome. Yeah, because you did mention too last time you were a little worried about what the reception would be like when you got there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But everybody, yeah, as I said, been super friendly. It seems safe.
like super safe. We've been going for runs late at night and that sort of thing, just being like trying to get ready for fighting at a late time and um, yeah, don't feel in danger or anything like that. So, what was the actual uh, what was the actual travel for getting there? How how long did it actually take you? What did it look like? I think it was twenty two hours of actual flying, and then maybe like thirty hours or thirty two hours to like total to get here. But um, yeah, it wasn't wasn't too bad. I slept a lot of it, so it was, it was good. <laughs> okay. Good rest well needed. And look, let's talk about prep because last time we spoke to you, the announcement had just been made that you got this title fight and then from there on in you were preparing not only to fight but to fight for a title. So talk about that preparation and perhaps it was a little bit different with a title on the line. Yeah, the, the preparation itself is pretty much the same. It's just we do more. We do it like more. So five, five minute rounds isn't easy. Um, and then yeah, doing that, like shark tanks and stuff like that around that is, is quite horrible. So <laughs> I'm glad that that's over now and I get to just fight some guy in a cage. Images have emerged, Dan, of Steve and um, Alessandre up on a mountaintop in Brazil. Beautiful scenery, but you were there with them face to face. So what was that moment like? Yeah, it was um, kind of surreal. Like, obviously, I've watched him for a long time, just seeing him in person, face to face. And um, it was kind of weird were being like there was that respect there but there's like that tension um and all that adrenaline and stuff that builds up and um i was definitely pumped up by the end of the exchange and i could yeah ready for the fight how has training been you get through uh you get it was a bit of shorter camp than usual but how how was it all like if you could um sum it up it went well or or too it was very difficult or how did it all how did it all kind of play out these last couple weeks no it was um it went yeah, very well. Obviously, came straight off of uh, another camp, so I was already fit. It was just uh, putting in some extra rounds. But I think the fact that I'm always training like all year round, and it's not like the first time I've ever trained for five fives. I did it fighting for titles in Eternal, so I was well prepared. And um, yeah, I feel like I've leveled up in a few areas, and yeah, ready to go. You've leveled up in the media too. You're everywhere at the moment on every podcast <laughs> and every news outlet, which is really cool. Um, but obviously, would be quite the adjustment for you. So, how have you found, you know, all the attention that comes with being a part of a title fight? Yeah, I mean, I think to start with, everything like that is cool. Um, it can get tiresome, but yeah, I don't know. Just taking it in my stride. I try to enjoy every part of the sport, and at the end of the day, like all the media and stuff that comes with it, like you guys are trying to help me out, right? So um, I appreciate that and um, you try to give my best. We are indeed, Steve. We are indeed. Look, we also had a conversation with Pantoja um, about you and in terms of what he thought you were, you know, like as a fighter. And he said that, you know, you're a big challenge for him, that um, you've got nothing to lose here, that mm. you've, you've been in the UFC for, you know, what, a year, not even a year, um, and that you've got everything, you know, to gain winning this fight and he has more to lose. So what, what do you think about that? Because there's been a lot of doubters out there saying that this moment shouldn't have been yours. Yeah, I mean... There is a lot of pressure on me. Um, it is a tough challenge for him, just not because um, I've not had many fights in the UFC and I have nothing to lose. I have lots to lose. This is my dream. I've been pushing for a long time to get to here. So um, I feel like there's just as much pressure on me as it is on him. And um, yes, yeah, it's been a long journey and we're going to cap it, cap it tonight. Yeah, I'll definitely Saturday say um, from when the fight first was announced, so people were a bit surprised. Um because your ranking wasn't as high as like a usual title contender. But I feel like like the fans' perception of this fight has really changed. Like once, because once initially when they see it, people were like, oh, one's fighting or the champion's fighting number nine or number 10. It doesn't make much sense. But once people have the time to process it and they're like, oh, wow, this guy's out, this guy's out. Like, it yeah. does. Now people can really see and I feel like the fans' perception of this fight has really changed and people are getting really excited for this now. So I, have you felt that kind of fan perception change where now people have forgotten all of that They've forgotten about the rankings and they're just excited for this fight now, which I know a lot of fans are. Yeah, I think, I, yeah, I definitely agree with you. I think um, a lot of people are just looking at it like skill for skill now rather than mm. whether I earn the fight or not. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've felt such great support from Australian uh, Australians and New Zealanders that um, honestly, everybody else that's hating on me, I couldn't care less about. So uh, yeah. <laughs> 
And look, do you have any thoughts about when you do walk out and that possible um, reception that you'll receive once you get, you know, once you're walking out to the stadium? Is there any sort of preparation you have for that? I guess I just, yeah, thought about it, like visualisation, I guess. Mm. Obviously, they're not going to be a pro-me crowd. They're going to be yelling, Uva my hair, and uh, <laughs> yeah, as I leave with the belt, they'll be throwing bottles at me. I know, so <laughs> I'm ready for it. I'm excited for it. And uh, yeah. Nice. And how do you see this fight going, Steve? Obviously, your hand raised at the end of the at the end of the day. But how do you see this fight going? Yeah, I mean, I've seen it going a lot of different ways. I feel like I'm going to be able to hold range and walk him onto shots. And he's a he's a very tough guy, so. I'm not expecting to get him out of there within the within the time frame, but um, I'll be definitely trying. Well, Steve, thank you so much for your time. Absolutely cannot wait for this one. I'm backing you all the way. I know Dan is too, but thank you so much for your time. Go well. Cheers, brother. Thank you. Excited. Can't thank wait for much. it, mate. Exciting times, this UFC 301. Also featuring former featherweight champion Jose Aldo. He's the co-main event. Mm. Um, fighting Jonathan Martinez. What are your thoughts on Jose Aldo making a comeback for this Brazil card? He's back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the old, the old fighters, man. It's, it's hard for them to really put it down and walk away. He was supposed to be retiring, but obviously stayed pretty active um, doing some professional boxing. I know he fought uh, Jeremy Stevens on the Gamebridge show on Jorge Masvidal show. So he's been staying busy um, boxing, but it's the UFC, man. He's right back in the mix. It's no easy fights. It's not like he's coming back and they're just giving an old dog some easy fights to, uh, to keep him busy or ease him back into it. Uh, Martinez is on a six-fight win streak over some very um, tough competition. So he's right back in the deep end, but it's Jose Aldo. It's one of the best... Um, featherweights to ever put some gloves on so that'll have the I feel like the Brazilian fans will be going absolutely ballistic for that fight absolutely and if you weren't excited about any other fight everyone knows who Jose Aldo is so it's a it's a good business decision as well one would think do you think it's a good idea for him to come back against a fighter like Martin? oh never oh <laughs> never that's not that's not up to any other man um, to tell someone when when their time is up you obviously um, as a fighter, put some people in place, your manager, your coaches and stuff like that. So I'm sure that he would have taken um, that on board. And it's not like he walked away and he just has been sitting on the mm. couch for the last year or last couple of years. Um, you know, he, he, he was competing at the highest level. You know, he got out-wrestled, um, but that was by Morab, who pretty much out-wrestles absolutely everyone. So in, in terms of Morab's last few fights, like that... Is, what he did to Ozzy Aldo is no different from what he's done to any other opponent to earn himself um, the bantamweight title shot. So yeah, Jose was competing at the highest echelon of, of the sport. He's not, he's kept busy. He's been away, staying in the gym, boxing, focusing on um, staying active with that and working on a specialized craft. So I'm sure, I'm sure they would have taken it all into account. And yeah, that just he could not, you know, there's no better way. There's no better way to come back than a pay-per-view show um, in Rio and in, in where you're born and raised. Yeah, exactly. And Pantoja alluded that, to that as well, that the Brazilian people are such a, a passionate, emotional mm, people. Mm. And if you were ever going to come back and have a fight again, you would 100% want to do it in front of your home crowd. Would have to be, have to be. So nah, you, you can't deny the, the excitement level around Jose Aldo coming back is, is 10 out of 10. Also featuring at UFC 301 in Brazil is Australian lightweight Jamie Malaki, and he also joins us now. Kia ora, Jamie, and welcome back to the show. How's it going? Look, we'll ask you the same question. How is it going over there in Brazil? Yeah, it's going good. We've uh, been there a day now, and uh, the weather's good, the people are good. Um, settling in nice, and uh, it's going to be a good fight week. Well, what are you doing? First, I want to know, what are you doing in the hallway, mate? Because... <laughs> Ravinda just showed, Rev just showed me a picture of your of your view from your hotel room. <laughs> showed me a beautiful, beautiful Beach. view overlooking the view, high rise apartment. Now you're sitting in a you're sitting in the hallway, mate. What's going on? Yeah, yeah I'm looking like I think you just said I was looking like a bit of a prisoner out here, but um, <laughs> no, nah, I think the coach is in there sleeping, so I'm just gonna you know, pop you outside and. Uh, oh, I know how you feel. I know how you feel. Sometimes it's just not worth it. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Keep coach happy. <laughs> Let sleeping dogs lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you feeling? You're looking pretty trim there, from what we can see. How has your prep gone? We know you were over in um, Thailand doing the the hard work before heading over there. Yes. Yeah, I uh, had a great camp over in Thailand. Um, 
and then just finished up at home um, feeling good, feeling uh, fit, sharp and ready. Um, I think I, I was even, was I talking to you guys before uh, when, when I was in Thailand? Yeah, you were in Thailand last yeah. time we spoke. Yeah, no, nah, so that was, that was really good, man. Uh, great camp over there. Had to deal with uh, Frankie Hickman and George Hickman <laughs> and their antics. Um, but uh, no, nah, I was I was very grateful to be over there and, and training with them and got some got some really good uh, really good new techniques. So I'm, I'm looking forward to showing it. <clears throat> yeah, I was going to say, what did you get out of a camp over there? Because you know this isn't your first rodeo. You've been in the UFC and you've been fighting for many years. So, you know, what did what did that add for you in terms of your skill set? Yeah, I, I learned a lot um, in terms of skills, and then I think that the best thing about going over there was just um, the change of scenery, doing a new camp, um, new bodies, uh, having the variety over there was just unreal, um, as opposed to having your, your 10 usual training partners where you all know each other's games and same bodies, same looks. Um, you'd be on the mat with, say, 60 different training partners from all around the globe um, with so many different styles and different looks. So it was kind of like brain overload sometimes, um, but it was it was really good. And uh, I stayed uh, stayed in good shape and um, just, uh, yeah, re- really good uh, four weeks that I was over there. How was your trainee, uh, how was your travel getting over to Rio? Um, we spoke to Steve earlier, he wasn't the happiest camper. <laughs> we know we know he came over a little bit earlier, but on the same thing, like how long did it take you to get over there and how was all your travel and, and adjusting to to the times and all that different stuff you've got to get through? Oh, bro, the travel sucks. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we had two stopovers, um, so all up, including the stops is about 21 hours um but yeah that's just part of the game as, yeah. as you know and um yeah but we're, we're settled in nicely here and i think the time's actually worked out pretty good because we got here uh late at night so we just went straight to bed and um adjusted to the time zone uh, pretty nice nice no, it's, I'm not going to say that you ever seem grumpy when we have you on the show but you seem really happy mate you seem like you're in a really good spot uh, I mean, we know you're cutting in things too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People say oh, I always look sad and depressed. I don't, I don't, <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's good energy over here. Um, the, the Brazilians are very um, And I, I don't know, I've, I've just got a, I've got a good feeling. I've got a good feeling about this week and how this week is going uh, yeah, nice one. That's the best spot to be in too. And also, you know, you've got fellow countryman Steve Ursig at the top of the ticket. What's that like to, you know, you're away in Brazil in a faraway land, but you do have another uh, countryman there as well? Yeah, it's cool, man. Um, it's it's special. Uh, I, I feel uh, pretty honoured to be here and um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for, for both of us to go out and get the wins. I uh, bumped into him today actually and He's uh, chill as a cucumber. He's calm, cool, collected. Um, and that speaks in uh, confidence in itself, you know. So uh, I'm looking forward to going and uh, seeing him do his thing and me do, do my thing and we'll, we'll come home with these wins. Nice one, bro. Well, we'll leave it at that. You can get back into your room now. Come off the floor in the hallway and go, <laughs> go back yeah. into your room. Get comfy. <laughs> I think I'll do what Dan said, just leave him sleep. Oh, I'll go for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, uh, mate. Uh, All the best, right, mate. Man. Can't wait for it. Can't wait for it. This weekend, Australia's MMA promotion Hex Fight Series lands in Auckland at Trust's Arena and it features our guest that joins us at the table today, Navajo Sterling. Kia ora and welcome back to the show. Kia ora. Thank you. It's good to be here again. So, yeah. No, it's awesome. Welcome back. He's already been on. Yeah, yeah, yeah been he's on. been on. Yeah, yeah. I, I went. I was on. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, Early finally, days. finally back again. <laughs> so, yeah. All familiar. Look, talking about all familiar, you're back in the octagon again. Exciting stuff. We mentioned um, off camera that you haven't fought since October. So talk to us about your prep for this fight. Yeah, uh, it's, it's been awesome. Like to finally get the match. I, I was, I was uh, panicking like that. I wouldn't, wouldn't get the fight halfway into the year. 
I mean, I had had plans to fight in March in in Melbourne on, on their last show. I, I I took to the internet to call out who I was seeing was active, and um, they didn't want to fight. So you know, I've just I've just been in training since since Christmas, trying to stay prepared for for the hex. And um, now we got someone an online day's notice. So yeah. Yeah, I'm actually excited for this fight now. Mm. Before it was just you know, <laughs> it was like heavyweight, not a guy I'd never seen before. I only had like a very like yeah, uh, one pretty fight. yeah one fight on his pro record. But then I saw a couple of days ago that he got announced to fight. He's now fighting uh, Stu Deer. Mm -hmm. Weapon. I like this kid. Stu Deer Tuff is from Tasmania. He's an absolute weapon. And you know, I, th I believe, just from memory, that that was the last fight um, that Israel Adesanya had before he made his way into the UFC. So that was his, his last fight was against Stu Deer. So Navajo looking to kind of follow in those footsteps on Hex. Um, get it past Stu Deer, who, who is an incredibly tough opponent. Like, yeah, anyone from Tasmania can take a punch. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is about that place. But nah, now I'm, I'm definitely excited for this fight. Biggest test of, of Navajo's career. Stu coming in, stepping up to the plate. Now I can't wait. Yeah, this is probably the um, fight I'm most looking forward to on the card for Hex. Look, that's one of the senior guys in your gym saying that. I don't want to use the word pressure, but yeah. geez. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's all good. Like uh, I know, like it's if you gotta mm. step into the limelight, um, you gotta you gotta pull on the pressure. So I just mm. tell people to keep putting more pressure on me, and and uh, yeah, you know, so uh, what else? Like we only got one life to live, so might as well go for it. Yeah, nice one. And you work hard enough. You say you've been in camp since you know Christmas, so yeah, yeah. you're just <clears throat> waiting for that. Yeah, challenge. the opportunity. Yeah, mm. this all, it's just waiting for those opportunities. Um, so I can get to the UFC, you know, that, that's all I can do. I figure like most of the people my size are all, all playing rugby and league. <laughs> all black. So Dan, Dan always says that all the time. Yeah. But, um, you know. Uh, I said uh, if I was as big as him, yeah. I'd, say, I'd be kicking a ball around for a living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said I'm too bloody skinny to play rugby <laughs> for a living. So that's why you don't see me doing it. If I could sing or dance as well. Maybe football. Maybe football. Yeah. You can get away soccer ball. I'm not that fast though, so I've got nothing going with me. I've got this and this. That's it. But yeah, no, it's um, very fortunate to get the fight. To get the fight. So, so. what with this fight over Stu that'll make a... Because you've got an undefeated professional record at the yeah. moment. Yep. Uh, they'll be put me to three, to three. So three, yeah, three. I know it's like realistically, obviously at like the smaller weight classes where there's like a lot, um, you know, there's 150 guys in the UFC at lightweight, 170 or at, at welterweight. Um, but it gets thinner. Like guys get into light heavyweight and heavyweight with records, three and oh, four and oh, five and oh, uh, you know. J the Tougher brothers, they both got in. I believe they were only 3 0 professional records. Yeah. Then they cracked it into the UFC. So it's very realistic um, that with a win over Stu Deer, that he, Navajo, will be in with a shot for, for, let's say, a UFC Perth short notice opportunity comes up, contender series. Like it's all, yeah, it's a big opportunity here for a few fighters. Brando as well, another undefeated um, heavyweight, mm -hmm. and that'll put him at 3 0 as well. So it's really, this Hex fight series is a huge opportunity for these guys because it might be the last time you see yeah. Brando and Navajo fighting on uh, home soil without you paying $2,000 for the tickets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a flight. <laughs> Now that's cool. And you know, how best are you preparing yourself? Because we've seen you come in, you've got a little, your own camera crew. Yeah, so yeah. you're documenting everything yep. and um, putting everything out there for the world. Is this part of, you know, promoting yourself and putting yourself out there as well? Yes, yes, no, for sure. I've, I've kind of like, because I've not been able to fight, I've, I've, uh, I'm trying to stay relevant, you mm. know, in any way I can. And the people, the thing about fighting is like, people, you might have world-class fighters and people don't know who they are, they don't really care. You know, but if they know who you are, know who you are as a person, where you come from, your your upbringing, and all the things that you've done to fight to get there, um, they're more invested, and that's how I get the people around me, um, people of New Zealand, Aotearoa. You know, that's how they stand behind me in in, in the rise to the UFC, mm. and we're trying to capture like everything going into that, and uh, so when people can look back and see where I came from. You know, a small town in an upper hut. Um, people, people can take inspiration for that for, you know, the future generations uh, after me. So that's all it is: is just putting it, putting it out there for people to to watch and be a part of, 
and uh, yeah, they become more invested in the fight, you know, and yeah, that's that's what I believe, anyways. I love that. And you know, when you talk about being busy and staying relevant, I know that you're training at City Kickboxing all the time, but I saw you competing at ADCC yep. in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as well. So talk to us about that. About you're not just doing one thing; you're you're trying to stay relevant. Yep. In all aspects. Yep. It's just another one of those like banking experience. Um, mm getting that, that live feel of, of uh, life or death like sort of grappling, you know. If it's not a fight, but um, competition. just, yeah, it's mm. competition. I love competition and uh, I'm, I'm always there to win. You know, even though it's not my main sport, what I'm focusing on, I still like give it my all and, and uh, treat it like a fight and, mm. and uh, I do well in those. And it, it, it's like banking more experience, you know, and getting, you might be deep in the submission or, or putting one on you know you're getting a little bit more confident now uh, cinching it up so yeah that's that's what I would say in terms of staying active outside mm. the cage yeah well and you weren't just participating you won a gold medal too so yeah. <laughs> bravo <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> but at the same time you know when you are in the gym and putting in the work you've got guys like Dan you got Izzy you got Kai you got all these people around you who can give you that you know that push or that that extra two yeah. percent right to, yeah. to know what you really do need to make it to the top yeah, yeah, nah, for sure. Um, having like Carlos and and Tyson, they they told me, you know, they had to learn on the job as well because they were coming in, you know, on three fights as well, and and uh, just giving me like an insider. So mm. you know, I feel like ahead of the game in that in that sense, as well as like obviously having my kickboxing career before that. Mm. So uh, yeah, nah, they've been big help for me. Yeah, Dan, what is Navajo like in the gym? No, nah, good, hard worker. <laughs> um, Takes plenty of stick off Coach Eugene, but uh, <laughs> no, solid, pushes through. Like the the amount of how quickly he's got so much better is just, yeah, due to the, the bigger guys he's got to around him to work, having Tyson come in, having Israel there, being part of a lot of Israel's camps, being part of going over and being, um, seeing the UFC fight week will just prepare him mentally for when he actually gets there because that's the biggest thing is, is once you get to the UFC it's fight week and you, and you have that process down because you've already been a part of it you've seen it you've seen the big lights you've seen the big show you know what it's like to be out back so it's like that um, yeah we all had to learn it for ourselves I was kind of like the the um, the test dummy, the crash test dummy for a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and now these boys get to come in and, and with all this kind of experience and knowledge. So, yeah, he's excited. Big things. I'm excited for um, Navajo's future. And we had the pleasure of coming into City Kickboxing and stalking you a little bit and the rest of your teammates that will be on that card. And here is a little look behind the scenes with Brandon Perichich and Blood Diamond. Welcome back to UFC on Sky. Look, we're here at a training session this morning. Eugene's taking the fold for some um, sit-down tutorials right now. Talk to us about the feel coming up to Fight Week on Hex. Yeah, it's um, great. <laughs> Brando, welcome back to UFC on Sky. Look, Hex this weekend. How excited are you to get back in the ring and so soon? I'm so excited. It's been a long time coming. Our body's feeling great. Energy in the gym is really great. I was having a sit-down today and with game plans and stuff so um, yeah getting some good rounds in and this is the best I've ever been so very excited to get back in there. The promotions come over from Australia so it offers you know New Zealand fighters a little bit you know something different and um, different opponents so talk to us about your opponent because he's coming over from Australia too right? I've known him for a while now I wanted to fight him five years ago um, that fight didn't happen so I'm just keen to get in there and show that I'm the best heavyweight in Australasia um, and as for Hex coming to New Zealand, what a, what a privilege this is, especially for the young up-and-comers. We've got so, many, uh, so much talent in New Zealand, so the more shows the better. So I really appreciate Hex coming and I hope they come back again. Because obviously some of your teammates who are now in the UFC have competed on Hex, so it's not only you know, good to keep fighters active, but it's also a great platform to get eyes on you moving forward. 
for sure. I'm just following the game plan. You know, I visualized this years ago. Uh, ever since I started fighting on Nizu Fury, I saw Israel Adesanya headline Nizu Fury, then I started headlining Nizu Fury, and now I'm headlining X. So I'm just following the path and I can't wait to see what I can do. Talk to us a little bit about game plan, obviously, without giving too much away, because, I mean, there are a lot of bigger guys in here, so, you know, you've got the training partners, you've got the, um, you know, the power here to really get you, you know, ready and well. For sure. Um, I train everything, so I'm ready for anything. I'm ready for five rounds. Pretty sure it's only three rounds anyway, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm well-rounded, so I'm ready to go. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about... <laughs> get him. <laughs> For those living under a rock who may not have seen you compete yet, what can fight fans expect to see when you take to the octagon? Uh, a lot of aggression and a big knockout. So that's that's my style. I don't leave it to the judges, that's for sure. Just a shout out to all my sponsors for helping me over the years, all the fans for believing in me, and uh, I'm going to put on a show for them. <laughs> well, Blood, welcome back to UFC on Sky. Look, exciting times ahead. You're appearing on Hex. Fight fans get to see you back in action. You know, after losing my contract, uh, it was a bit of a rocky road, but yo, my body's still good, I feel healthy, I still want to keep going, so yeah, yeah I, I love the sport, so yeah, why not? Your thoughts on getting this opportunity with a promotion like Hex, it's their first time um, in Auckland? Another big promotion, you know, a lot of uh, people went on to do bigger things um, in their careers after like winning Hex. Great example, Kevin, you say. You know, he did his thing and he got into the UFC. It feels like somewhat of a homecoming for you because when the locals know their blood's on a on a local card, it's going to be fireworks. So what kind of show are you wanting to put on at Hex? Uh, you said it yourself, fireworks. Ever since my last fight, I've been working a lot. I've worked with uh, Volk, uh, came back home and picking up uh, a lot of things. Uh, I mean, I've, I've changed the way I uh, train now. I mean, I... I hate reading and writing, but this time I'm actually doing a lot of reading and uh, doing a, uh, writing a lot of notes, so that you know, it's I've, I've got a lot to display. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping my opponent is game because uh, I've got a lot to show. Yeah. Do you feel like you have a lot to prove as well? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> uh, let, let's be honest. I've done it. You know, I, I don't need to, the only person I need to prove is myself. I'm hoping my journey could inspire someone because, hey, we've been down, you know, you fall down nine times, the tenth time you rise, you know. Like, I've been watching this uh, awesome anime, um, what is it called, One Piece, and the uh, leading character, he loses more than he wins, but he never stops. His goal is to be king of the pirate, and yeah, that's... That's something I've been watching it a lot and it's inspired me a lot and I'm like, yo, this guy, he got beat, he got knocked down, he was almost dead, but he's always coming back. So I'm like, yo, okay, cool. Um, I'm here now. So yeah, it's, it's time for me to get into my fifth gear. Yeah. And just like One Piece, he's surrounded by, you know, a group of people that help him to be better and support him and things like that. And of course, we see that every time we walk into City Kickboxing, that's on display. You're there, you're training with Izzy. Talk about your preparations and getting in the best shape possible. TKB is not just a gym, it's a family, you know. Um, so yeah, through the dark times, the good times, they always uh, remind me that I'm something special and they always remind me to shine bright like a diamond so I'm out here shining and um, yeah the boys have been helping me through all the, those little holes that everyone has have seen so I'm like yo I, I, dare, I now dare people to take me down because yeah I've got a, I've got a present for them down there. Now look I don't want to age shame you or anything like that but you've been on the scene for a while and you've seen these local cards come and go but it seems of late there are a lot more at a lot of you know at a high level so what are your thoughts on you know like the evolution of how tough the competition really is getting here in New Zealand like when I look back at where I was and like I see some of these guys uh, at the age like when I was their age I'm just like damn they have evolved a lot you know um, so it, it is it's, it's impressive the game has come a long way. I'm only new to MMA, you know, uh, people forget that. Um, but man, I'm just, I guess I'm aging like fine wine, you know, like I keep getting better and better. That's what I've noticed. I'm getting older, but I'm getting better. MMA now is, it's a, it's a, it's a what do you call it? It's a discipline on its own. It's, you know, it's not like how it used to be. Now it's an actual discipline. 
So yeah, it's cool to see that happening out here. Not only you on the Hex Cut coming out of City Kickboxing, you're there going with the team in full force as well. Oh yeah, yeah. it's always awesome uh, getting in there with a big group. It's just that, that thing of um, sharing a camp with my, with my family and um, uh, when it's all said and done, you know, when we retire, but, oh, I remember the fight we did and then you did that. And, oh yeah, that was awesome. You know, those are the stories we'll get to share, you know, and I'm with Brando and Jenna and, oh yeah, now nah, I almost forgot, big now. Yeah, nah, I, I'm just so excited, like seeing them as well doing their thing. I'm like, yeah, that's going to be awesome. Thank you for joining us again and we'll be watching closely at Hex Fight Series. Awesome. So do not miss the action Hex Fight Series going down this Saturday night, Wild West, Trust Arena. Get your tickets and be there. You guys can catch me on Hex Fight Series this weekend. Me and City Kickboxing, we're coming to take home. Why you coming at the king? Why you coming at the guy? Fantosia's a hunter. The best 145 pound fighter in the world. Steve Arsag. This man is very well rounded. He can do it all at a world class level. The man's an absolute living legend. Jonathan Martinez, six wins in a row. UFC live from Rio de Janeiro.